you guys what's going on welcome to cereal and midnight my name is heath and this video is all about the packaging we're talking about the good the bad the bizarre uh the different kinds of packaging that companies have put blu-rays and dvds in over the years from the steel books to the snapper cases to the elaborate collector's edition packaging um this video comes by request from one of my patreon supporters will uh, and I, I do a monthly hangout with my, uh, my Patreon supporters. And in the last video, he requested this topic. And I thought it was a great suggestion. Uh, but as I started to pull things off the shelf to, to, to give samples for this video, I was amazed at the different, how many different kinds of packaging we've had over the last couple of decades. It's really uh, crazy. So I'm going to start with uh, the old Warner Brothers snapper cases. I've talked about this on the channel before. I used to really hate these uh, these old snapper cases. They're basically cardboard uh, with a teeny bit of plastic. Now, I think at the time, these felt like a step up from a VHS, uh, you know, like a VHS case, which was just cardboard. Um, but uh, this was like Warner Brothers doubled down on this snapper case and everybody else went with the standard DVD case. Um, and this eventually faded. So I did not like them, but I've kind of come around on them. They hold nostalgia for me now. They're, they're not, they're still not good. Uh, but they're just, uh, I, I kind of like the picture, you know, you get like an extra flap of, <laughs> of artwork because you get the front, you get the back, and then the bonus flap. <laughs> so this is really here just as a, an indicator for where we've come from. So uh, the old snapper cases, this is a variation of that that I've seen pop up. This is one of my Dean Martin DVDs, and this is literally uh, kind of the same thing, only it doesn't snap. So there's nothing to hold this safe and secure and closed. Uh, if anything, like if I threw this down on the ground, the disc might pop out. So this is probably one of the worst. Um, I would say this is the worst packaging, but I know some of the things that are coming up. There's there's much worse than this. At least this holds the disc in place, which we can't take for granted at this point. Um, I got to talk about this this current thing that's happening with the VHS. You know, I'm a big champion of Mill Creek's uh, retro VHS slipcases that they do for their Blu-rays. Uh, this is the worst example of that trend, in my opinion. This is where you have, there's just a, a few discs in here, you guys, and this thing takes up, it's a beast. It is a mammoth beast. Uh, meant to look like an old VHS tape, but of course it's much bigger than a VHS tape. Even in, in rental packaging, this is much bigger than that ever would have been. So we open it up, looks like a VHS tape, uh, lower the flap, we've got one disc, we've got another set of discs, and then, wait, there's more. There's more discs back here. Um, it's it's okay. It's fine. Like, as a gimmick, I get it. I, I like it. Uh, I got a really good price on this, but I would hate to be paying more just for this packaging because they're, these discs are held on with little... They, they affix to these little foam. These are foam. And they don't really work. It's a good idea in theory. I get what they were going for, but those little foam nubbies, they don't really work. Uh, you try to put the disc back on there. Sometimes they go on. Sometimes they just kind of tear the foam or like mash it into into nothing. Um, so I don't love I don't love this packaging. But this is it's an example of something we've had. Um, steelbooks. So I I'm not a huge steelbook collector for the most part. I know a lot of guys. A lot of you guys are uh, are big steelbook fans. I like them. For me, they're they're heavy. They're usually more expensive. I, I think they're okay. But I'm not. I don't collect steelbooks. I've got. 10 maybe. Uh, so these are here because these exist and I know that they're very, very, very popular. Um, and I will occasionally, I have been known to double dip on a disc uh, because of collectible steelbook packaging. Big Lebowski is one that I believe I double dipped because of that. Not a steelbook, but kind of similar is, is this. These Walt Disney Treasures 10s. They're not the only people to have put things in 10s. 10 packaging is... Um, it might be over now. I'm not sure that anybody's still doing it at this point, but I know for a while uh, these were like, oh, it's like archives. And I like the idea of it because it's like, well, you have, it's, it feels like film, like you have a film canister or something. It felt prestigious. So at the time that the Disney treasures were coming out, which rest in peace, Disney treasures, we still, I remember, you know, seven, eight years ago, I was like, well, DVD seems to be fading. Maybe they'll put some of those old sets on Blu-ray and they never did. Uh, so these are more collectible now than they've ever been. But these old uh, these old tin packaging uh, gimmicks, I, I, I like them. I got a soft spot for them, but man, are they heavy, and they will really warp your shelves. Um, let's talk about, I'm not sure exactly what this is called, this this method of packaging. I, I'm not sure. The, the idea is that the discs are held in between 
uh, these cardboard pages. They're in the page themselves. So you would, there's no good way to get these out. You have to reach in, the booklet just fell out. You have to reach in, touch the disc, or you could tap them out. Um, but uh, yeah, tap them out, make them tap out UFC style. No, but you have to, you have to, you know, there's different ways you can get them out, but this is not ideal. I'm not a huge fan of this type of packaging. Uh, if, if I had a choice between this and a more standard, uh, you know, clamshell kind of a thing, I would definitely go with standard. So I, I get why companies do things like this because it, it kind of looks cool and you can put information on the actual pa pages themselves, but practically they're not great. Uh, and as another example of that, of something that seems cool, but is not, I have pulled this Lost in, Lost in Space uh, collection. Uh, now I have the, the complete series. This is just season one, but it, it exemplifies what I'm talking about. There is no good way to open this. They have every, so this unfolds, it's like an accordion of, of death, uh, death for your discs, because every, every little nook and cranny, here, let me turn this around. Oh, we've already got a disc coming out on its own. Uh, this is coming out on its own. You gotta be very careful. How how are you supposed to get discs out of here? You're gonna have to. Uh, you gotta do, you gotta do the thing again. It is wedged in there, uh, so when you want them out, they're hard to get out, and when you want them to stay there, they're just rolling around. I I hate this packaging. I hate it. I cannot emphasize that enough. I don't dislike it strongly. I hate it. I think whoever came up with this probably thought that they were saving money i'm not sure because you're like well you know it's basically just paper um but there's nothing to secure these in here there's nothing you spend you know a, a good amount of money on a collector's edition on something like this and you expect th your investment to be protected but this is not this is one of the worst packagings i've seen um again one of not not the not the worst this is another Bad packaging, you guys. Uh, this is my Lone Ranger collection. Now, it's a cool collection, uh, but it's got a lot of s cool stuff in here. You open up the box. You've got, like, full-color artwork. came with a bunch of tchotchkes, um, like, certificates and, like, tickets and stuff. Like, here's a whole, whole little envelope of stuff. But then the discs themselves are in these folding, again, folding paper containers. Now, at least... They kind of, I think this is called a wallet, like a CD or DVD wallet. I don't like this either because if you get them upside down, they're coming right out. Also, there's no way to get these out without directly, uh, you know, directly contacting the, the, the background. You get a little bit of dirt in there, it's going to scratch it every time you try to take it out. So again, trying to be gimmicky, maybe trying to save money and uh, it just doesn't work like it needs to. The, 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 the first priority should be function and security of the discs, right? Um, this is what I wanted to talk about. This is my, this is kind of blown out. Let's see if I can, <laughs> it's white in a, in a well-lit room. That's not working. This is the Humphrey Bogart Essential Collection. There's like a couple of dozen bogey movies on here. Uh, and this is a good compromise between uh, aesthetics, function. They've used these slim cases, these uh, thin a slim line, I think is what we call these anyway. They're little thin clamshell cases. And each one is, is very thin and they hold two discs each. So uh, I like these. I think these are a good a good compromise. So I wanted to shout that out. Then there's the Digibook. Is this a Digibook? I, I can't keep all this stuff straight, but you essentially have, this is the Blu-ray version. You get a Blu-ray and then the uh, the book. Here's the back, back flap thingy. Um, the book is attached. It's part of the packaging. Um, I like these. These these seem to be better function than uh, some of the other gimmicky packaging because it's not going anywhere. Unlike the Fraggle Rock set, this book is not ever falling out. It's not compromising anything for the disc. I don't have to dig the discs out of pages or anything like that. So I like this presentation. I think it's pretty cool. Um, so that's that's another one. Let's talk about Mill Creek for a second, you guys, because Mill Creek, uh, I think when a lot of people think about questionable packaging or unconventional packaging, they're thinking about Mill Creek. And it's because, so Mill Creek started years ago with uh, 
This is my warrior set. This is my peplum set, you guys. People sometimes say, what's a good place to start with peplum? I've talked about the Colossus of Rhodes here on the channel. This is a great set. I think it's technically out of print. I don't think this is in production anymore from Mill Creek. They burst burst it into smaller pieces, like eight movie collections, 12 movie collections. But if you can get your hands on this, do it. Um, but we're talking about the envelopes, the paper envelopes. Uh, I... And actually, I know some of you guys are not. I am 100% okay with these paper envelopes because uh, these discs themselves are never, they're never coming loose. They're never coming out of these envelopes. They're never coming off a spindle or anything like that. They're never going anywhere. These are completely secure. Um, if you're careful getting them in and out of the sleeves, there's no problems. Um, also, paper sleeves are very easily replaced if something were to happen. So this is where Mill Creek kind of started. And then they switched, at some point, they switched over to this model, which I like a whole lot less. Uh, this is the, the envelope, the envelope thing. Uh, so each, you get like a series of these. I don't like it. Uh, first of all, it's cumbersome. The size of the packaging does not work for me. Uh, it's also super flimsy. Um, now, there, I, I should note, when, when Mill Creek puts out complete series on Blu-ray, they don't do this. Every disc gets, uh, I've showed them before. You guys can check out many of my Mill Creek reviews. We get the stacked disc, two Blu-rays usually stacked one on top of each other. And people will be like, well, Mill Creek, why is Mill Creek stacking discs? Listen, you guys, at this point in the physical media game, everybody's stacking discs. Uh, this is my I Dream of Genie collection from Sony. This is the official, this is not Mill Creek. There is a Mill Creek version of this. This is the Sony version. Um, and it's a tray with this cardboard do lolly to hold everything in place. And it's just like 25 stacked discs or however many it is. Uh, I've never had any problems. I've been through this set at least once. And I'm careful when, I, when I'm done with the disc, I take it out, I put it back in there. I've never had any problems. None of these are scratched. But I could see that maybe they could be in the shipping or that like if this little piece of cardboard comes off and they're just rattling around loose in there, that's a problem. But I don't think companies are interested. I don't think anybody cares about that at this point in the physical media game because I just picked up some WWE uh, DVDs last week at Walmart and the discs are stacked on top of one another. It's just what we're doing now to save space, to make everything as economy uh, as possible. Let's talk about this. I don't even know what this packaging is called, but I like it. This is my child's play collection. Let's see if I can get this out of here. It's a tight fit. Okay. Uh, basically they are again maximizing space you've got two discs they overlap um, and I kind of like it because uh, you take this one disc off and this one slides under this tray so uh, no discs are ever directly touching each other um, there's this it's it's like elevated so that at all times there's distance between the discs that is ideal that is probably perfect perfect packaging um, but a compromise on that would be something like this. I think a lot of CBS shows are shipping like this now, the Star Trek shows. It's basically these massive bricks of, uh, of discs. And these discs do touch one another. They basically are laying one on top of each other, but they're not necessarily, I wouldn't say that they're stacked because they're kind of diagonal. Um, and they're supposed to be maybe a little, like a teeny tiny fraction of a millimeter between the discs. I don't know that there actually is because it pretty much seems like they're, they're directly touching. Um, but I actually am a fan of this kind of packaging. Um, what I, maybe I don't love is that this always just lifts right out. Um, but I think that's done honestly so that, cause this, this thing in the middle gets quite heavy. Um, this is, I've even seen bigger than this, bigger, thicker, uh, volumes than this. And I, I imagine that that gets pretty heavy and pretty brittle. So if you're trying to secure all those discs in the middle, uh, by like, you know, held on with tabs or something like that, that's going to break. That's going to be a high stress point. And it's always probably going to break in the shipping process, in the mailing process, things like that. We're almost done, guys. But this, I, I want to point out some of the worst packaging. In fact, I'm going to award this the worst packaging um, I've ever seen. 
Uh, the, and it's not the worst DVD I've ever seen. This is the Matt Houston Complete Series Collection. This comes to me from my buddy, also Patreon supporter, Eric Griggs from the Eric Griggs Design Studio. These DVDs come from um, VEI, not VCI, but VEI Entertainment. And in order to compromise a high disc count with modest packaging, I don't know, trying to save room, ah, they have gone with <laughs> envelopes. Um, not paper envelopes. These are like old CD wallets. And this will not do. Uh, you guys, this is not, this is not acceptable. In fact, it reminds me of Asian bootlegs. So this, I've had this for years, probably 15 years. This is my bootleg transformer set because I don't, I ordered it off of eBay, probably 2004 or so, um, because it looked awesome. It was affordable. It's a wood container. But you open it up, you've got this plastic thing inside. You open up the plastic case inside, and again, it's like a CD wallet. It's can you guys see that? Like it's just it's just more of these envelopes, like like the old school days. Um, this is a bootleg. This was done to keep costs as absolutely low as possible. But VEI, that's not that's not great. And I know that VEI is capable of better because I own this. This is the complete mod squad from VEI. Uh, it's 39 DVDs. You take the lid off. Look at that, you guys. Every disc has its own. Here, I'll show you. We'll do season one, volume one. Standard DVD case. Look at that. That is beautiful. So they're capable of better. They've just entered this. Uh, maybe this is what VEI, VEI has to do to remain competitive, to keep profits where they want them to be. I like the company because they're putting out shows that no one else has, uh, like Matt Houston. So um, it's just a shame about the packaging. And the last one I'm going to show, uh, it's in the thumbnail. It's, uh, it's my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles complete series collection, the animated series. Uh, they have reissued this in a, a packaging like, like this. And I picked this one up just because it's so much easier. Uh, this one wins in the cool factor department. But when it comes to practicality, it's not good, you guys. Um, so ugh, it's the van. It's the turtle's van. The turtle. It, now, it actually has rolling wheels. The guys are driving it. It's very cool. Um, but this top, it doesn't snap into place. There's nothing to really hold it on. And then inside are the discs themselves. There's a foam. I don't know that you'll be able to see this and I'm not willing to take all these out, but there's a foam, a green foam tray down there and they just slip onto that green foam tray. And so if you were displaying this somewhere and it rolled off the shelf or across the floor or wherever, if it rolled and tipped over, this is coming off, your discs are going everywhere. Uh, and I actually had a lot of trouble with this collection finding it when I first bought it I had a scratch disc because this is of course this is going to scratch discs But brand new out of the package. I had a scratch disc. So I contacted uh, who I have ordered it from it was, I think it was through Best Buy uh, And uh, I got a replacement and the replacement had scrap multiple scratch discs it Looked like it had taken a tumble. So I, the third time was the charm on this one They all look great, but I was like, you know what when they released the complete series and better packaging, uh, that clamshell packaging I was showing you guys, I was like, okay, it's time to upgrade and this becomes a display piece. So that's what I did. And that's, as, as I, as I see it, that's really the bulk of the current packaging. If I've left something out for DVD or Blu-ray packaging, let me know. And if it's, if it works, if, if, if it merits further discussion, I would be happy to talk about it here on the channel. But I think this really covers most of it. Uh, they have thrown a lot of different things at us. They've tried an awful lot of different packaging. What do you guys think about, what's your favorite, what's your least favorite? Am I on my own with, uh, with these envelopes, these, these old CD booklet style envelopes? That should never be a retail thing, right? Is that just me? Uh, let me know what you guys think about it. And uh, I, listen, I appreciate you. Will, thank you so much for the video suggestion. This was a great idea. So good job, man. Uh, guys, thank you so much for watching this. Talk to me about your favorite and your least favorite packaging in the comments below. And until next time, I will catch you later.